Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So in this video I want to talk about some major issues I was having with this peninsula tank behind me this past summer and early fall. But before we do that, if you want to help support the channel and pick up some SPS frags, you can do so at reefbum.com. And with that, let's get into the video. So about six or seven months ago, I started losing some SPS in this tank. It started out slowly, but then it was happening more frequently. And uh, yeah, at, at one point I was saying to myself, you know what, this tank is, uh, is dying. I'm gonna be losing all the SPS. I was, I was getting some STN events, and then a few weeks later, all of a sudden overnight, RTN, one colony, one SPS, which is be bleached out on me. It's like, wow, that's weird. Why would that happen? You know, and, and, and a lot of times there's no explanation in terms of why these RTN and STN events happen. I knew, I needed to do something about it. So I looked at my ICP tests for a couple of months, you know, around when it was going on. The one thing that did stand out was some very low phosphate levels. I had zero phosphates where maybe that was a trigger in terms of the, uh, the events that was going on in the tank. I checked for pests, acroweeding flatworms, parasitic copepods, you know, no pests were impacting the corals. So, you know, I, I had a couple of theories. You know, one was I went away on vacation in the middle of September and I was dosing more of the, the um, dry bacteria that I had been dosing than, than typical and also dosing more of the amino acids. I wanted it to, I wasn't gonna be able to dose while I was away. The tank sitter wasn't gonna dose it for me. So I kind of upped the dosage on, on that stuff before I left. And then when I came back, I had some episodes. So I thought, you know, maybe it was due to uh, more dosing of that stuff. But you know, it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to say. So I was, um, yeah, I was, I was definitely worried about the tank. So I reached out to my buddy, Chris Meckley at ACI Aquaculture, talked to him about what was going on with the tank, uh, filled him in in terms of the symptoms and all that sort of thing. And he said, you know what? I think you got a bacteria infection based on what you're telling me. So he uh, passed along this experimental oxalinic acid treatment. It's an antibiotic. It's uh, similar to Cipro, um, I believe, but it, that's another uh, antibiotic uh, treatment that folks have used to fight pathogenic bacteria. So I did the uh, oxalinic acid treatments. And, and for those of you that are having RTN, STN issues and uh, wanna reach out to me about the oxalinic acid treatment, please, please, please uh, eliminate all the other things I talked about in terms of um, you know, looking at your ICP tests, looking um, for pests, anything else that potentially could cause RTN and STN. And, and again, it's a lot, you know, a lot of it is a mystery in terms of why these episodes happen. So I, I did the uh, three of these uh, oxalic acid treatments. And before I did that, I tested my microbiome with the aquabiomics test. And I did find that um, I had two coral pathogens in the tank. So that's certainly something that you should consider doing before treating with oxalic acid is doing a aquabiomics microbiome test to see if you do have that stuff in your tank. And uh, yeah, so I had the presence of two of these um, coral pathogens, but about eight weeks after treatment, I did another uh, post test with the aquabiomics for the microbiome. And one of the coral pathogens was completely eliminated. The second one was significantly reduced. So the OA treatment definitely, definitely helped me in terms of getting the um, reducing, you know, a, a big, a big uh, assist in terms of reducing that um, coral pathogenic population in this tank. And, and I don't know, it's about four months since I did the treatments and the tank is looking better, better than ever in terms of color and growth. It's really, really thriving. So I am convinced in my case that um, the oxalic acid treatment helped big time, but again, it's antibiotics. You really don't want to hit the tank too often with antibiotics. 
So it's something that um, you know, I'm not gonna be doing on a regular basis. If, uh, if I do see some symptoms returning, you know, perhaps down the road I will, but I'm gonna be very, very cautious about it. I just felt like I needed to do something with this tank because it was just happening a lot. I lost, um, I started losing a Jason Fox home record colony, Walt Disney colony started bleaching out on me. It was like freaking me out big time. And there were other colonies that looked like they were next in line, reduced polyp extension, loss of colors. Uh, you know, it just kind of looked like, uh, and it was just happening more and more uh, frequently, more often. So I felt like I needed, um, you know, to kind of do a Hail Mary on this tank. And it worked. I mean, you know, thank God it worked because uh, like I said, everything is looking fantastic at this point. So that's the story on that. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.